Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Programming with a Purpose. This is the part one of the new series that will basically show you how to develop widgets inside the Xcode. So I will be showing you how we can create simple widgets that involve a date and some text passed by the application inside your uh, widget and how to display it. And afterwards, I am going to explore what are the new changes that are introduced in widget kit by WWDC 23. So let's get started. So for the purpose of widget development, I will be using the project that I have shown you in my previous tutorial that involves the uh, async image and the image downloading inside a newsfeed app. So you can use that code and afterwards you are going to add the widget by uh, moving to file new target and then uh, searching the widget inside all the extensions. And once the widget extension comes selected and once you press enter, it will be part of your project. The next thing that is important to note here is that we are going to pass the data from the host application to our widget. For that purpose, you will be needing the app groups. You are familiar with the app groups because if we are adding any of the extension to our project and we want to pass it the data since it is on the same level as your code, so you cannot directly call a class of it. So you need app groups to pass data between two different modules that are at a same level inside a project. So um, I am going to here add some of the app groups, both in the widget as well as in the project. So go to the capabilities and add the app groups for both of these um, project and widget. And after that, we are going to start writing the code. Now I will go to the load image file, which is the main widget file. And I am going to comment out the preview. After that, I'm going to modify the struct according to my needs. So it will contain all the data that you want to display uh, inside a widget. First is the date. And next is I have basically changed emoji to text. And this text is going to be passed from our host application. Now there are three functions that are required for a struct provider that extends timeline provider. First is the placeholder. So placeholder will show you the preview of the data, like whatever the static data that you want to display to the user. If no uh, dynamic data is loaded, you are going to uh, add all of this code inside the placeholder. Then there is a function get snapshot. It is going to display you the data inside the uh, widget gallery. So whatever you want to show inside a widget, inside the widget gallery, you are going to add it to the get snapshot, which I have left empty. And after that, there is a function get timeline and it is quite obvious from the name that it is going to show us basically configure all the data that we want to display inside the widget over a timeline like after one hour one day or after a certain time what uh, how we are we want the widget data to change that is handled by the function get timeline so to create the ui of the widget we are going to get a variable entry that is provider dot entry so this is the point which is going to give us the actual value of the data that we are going to display on the ui and it is configured using the function get timeline so i am going to create a v stack that will display the date on the top and the text that is passed from the host application to the widget at the bottom so this is a view and it remains same throughout your widget so i haven't configured the timeline I'm going to show you how to configure it in the next video. So here inside the function get uh, timeline, I'm going to get the user defaults uh, from the app groups. And after that, I am going to get the key uh, text and a string that is saved as a value for that key. And I'm going to add a simple entry with that text inside my timeline. So here I'm passing the text value from the host application to the widget inside the user default. So I have got user defaults from a, a app group that I've mentioned. And after that, I'm setting the value for the text key.
so now we are going to play the code and as you can see that uh, first we need to run the application that is important for launching a widget and then we are going to press the plus button on the home screen and after that we are going to select the widget so there are three different sizes with which a widget is available a small medium and a large size and i'm going to show you how a small and a large size widget will look so these are the two widgets that i've added this is all for this tutorial So this is all for this video. I hope you've learned something from it. Do not forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm going to do some other videos in this series so that you will be able to get a basic idea of how you can create dynamic widgets, widgets that have a certain timeline and the animation of widgets along with the latest changes that are introduced by WWDC 23. Thank you for watching.